gangsters, what's up guys? Okay, so I've had a request from a good number of you guys on the effects of transmission tuning and going step by step and what it looks like. So we're gonna do a little series here um, that's for everybody uh, to see and we're gonna go through um, my 4L60 GMC Yukon with mostly stock shift, sh shift settings, almost said something bad there, and we're gonna watch the data logs and kind of see how it progresses and what I do to get it to go in the direction that I want it to go in terms of where my final product usually ends up. Um, I would tell you to be very careful doing this. You need to make sure that your fueling is dialed in, you've dialed in your spark timing, you know, you're aware of any knock or, you know, any mechanical issues with the vehicle. Also be very careful with doing this stuff on the street and operating your laptop in your vehicle. So without further ado, let's look at the base file and where we're going to start from. Okay, guys, so we're going to go in here to my current file. Um, I've labeled it stock trans settings. And there are a few differences. Um, and in the file that you might have, I did get this uh, stock file that I'm going to have in, as a compare. I did get this from the HP Tuners repository. Come over here to Gen 3. Let's look down here. Okay, so if we navigate over to transmission, okay, I do have some slightly different shift scheduling things going on here that I've already dialed in. Mainly is I've uh, taken my downshifts and, and and brought those closer into the upshift so that it downshifts faster. I have this in some of my other videos, but I'm not too worried about that right now. Uh, my full throttle shift speed, 5,700 for the first gear, two to, and the two to three is 6,200. We're never gonna let the, thir the three, four shift happen at wide open throttle, and you always wanna make sure your gear selector is in third if you're gonna romp on it. That way you don't ever have the potential of it shifting into, into overdrive. Shift pressures, I have set my max pressure to 96 from the factory. They're 90, so just a slight bump. And then upshift, you can see that the this first data log we're going to look at has the stock, um, has the stock uh, shift pressures in it. Downshifts don't need to be changed. And the shift timing is factory. Um, the torque converter settings are slightly different. Um, this is my lockup schedule. Um, I, I show you guys this in all my other videos, so you can you can give this a look and give this a try. I'm not too concerned about this for right now. That's pretty normal stuff. And then torque management, it has the stock torque management in it that is in this uh, file that I have in the background. So this is the file that we're gonna start with. And this is how, another thing to mention too, I have shown you guys this trick with your spark retard limit table. Um, so this thing is gonna be able to swing all the way down to negative 10. So where that's gonna play a factor as we start to go through this stuff. So this is how I set the file up. This can be done for Gen 4 and Gen 5, even though the tables are different, the same process can be used. You can lock a torque converter up. You know, I would probably do that from the get go. And you're gonna see that the shift timing is gonna be the first thing that we're gonna go after. But um, this is what we're gonna to use to get into this first data log. So yeah, let's go check it out. Okay guys, so we're driving here and I've done this uh, test probably about a half a dozen times now trying to kind of find a good stretch of road and get a, a decent little quick data log here for you. So um, we've already gone through the file and we're looking at our shift timing and our pressures and our torque management and we're going to get ready to kind of see what's going to happen. Um, I do have my, my selector in D3 and we're going to go probably from a dead start a uh, dead stop and kind of see what it does um, and I might slow down and just kind of I don't want to make the I don't want the data log to look real you know kind of trashy and just convoluted I want it to be just what, what we're going to be looking at so um, remember I do have the shift scheduling changed just a little bit mainly the downshifts and then I do have the, t the torque converter pretty much unlocked um, so I'm going to kind of just wait here start our scan and here we go
data log there. And we'll also stop our stop our screen recording when we stop. Um, so I don't know if you can hear it in the video, but definitely there's definitely uh, some pretty big spark pockets. Um, it kind of feels like the vehicle is just kind of laying over. Uh, we're going to kind of look at you know what we can do to kind of adjust that just incrementally. So yeah, let's uh, we'll end this here and we'll get into the data log. Here we go. Okay, guys. So just to go through this wide open throttle data log that we just did, um, this is the hit that we just made, and uh, just gonna kind of look here. I'm logging all of the four speed, you know, foil sixty and eighty stuff that I need, and I've just got kind of the quintessential, you know, stuff over here for you to look at. Uh, mainly looking at uh, TPS as well as RPM, not so much speed, but we can have it in there. The engine torque, because if we look in our calibration file, um, it is going to use, uh, you know, torque um, to reference some of this stuff. So we do want to have that um, logging. And then obviously the gear here. So you can see, um, you know, this is kind of where basically from a dead stop, we come into it. And we have this big cut right here. So you can see at the lowest point, negative eight um, is where we get at. If you come over here to the um, spark advance table and we come to the spark retard limit, this is an engine speed. So at about 5,600 RPM, you know, you can see that this is the, the, you know, the lowest that it can go, kind of the, the floor, so to speak. Um, so that's something worth noting. And in the video, you could probably hear it, you know, kind of lay over. And if it was bad enough, you you know, it could probably throw you in your throw you forward just a little bit. Um, but nonetheless, the one, two. And if we look here, we can look at the time of latest shift. So here's our. So it looks like it took 0.2 seconds um, to complete that shift. If we come over here and that happened somewhere around the 350-ish foot-pound range, if you come over here to shift timing, I have my 2004 Yukon uh, file in the background that I got from the HV Tuners repository. So you can see here around that 350 range, you know, this is where the shift timing is at. So, you know, um, yeah, kind of slow, um, you know. We are in the throttle a good bit, so it's going to be able to reference some of these uh, higher shift pressures somewhere in here, you know, so, you know, it'll have some assistance in completing the shift. Um, and then if we kind of come over here, it's kind of weird, like the three shift happens probably because I went to I went to D cell, uh, but the three shift happens it doesn't show up. But this is what this is, believe it or not, you know, at first glance, this is a pretty tight you know, spark pocket in terms of the shape that it makes, although it does dip pretty low. So it's yanking a pretty good amount of power out. And then also too, you can see here in orange, we have uh, engine torque, you know, it, in this area, you know, we're somewhere in that 430 range. That's not, I don't believe that's a decent uh, representation of the torque the engine makes. It might be close, but this is just the algorithm that this PCM is using. But we're 470 here. And we're 440 here, and you can see, I mean, it it rips essentially uh, by by this operating system's algorithm. It yanks 200 foot pounds, you know. However, they're kind of quantifying that, uh, so to speak. So that's something worth noting for sure. Um, then we're gonna do an, another little clip here, and we're gonna do uh, just some light driving around, just to kind of see what it looks like driving around. You know, when you're really in the throttle, these shifts are gonna happen faster just based on how the factory calibration is. Um, let me go back over here to shift timing. You know, as, as it uh, kind of moves to the right here, a half a second, which is a long time. And then as you get up in this higher torque range, it kind of chops that down. So we'll, we'll do one here just uh, in a second of what it looks like with the just kind of driving around town. So let's check that out. Okay, guys. So um, this is kind of the end of this video of part one with our stock transmission, um, you know, settings here in this file for our Yukon. 
And uh, I just wanted to end it with a video here on just kind of a light throttle drive. I know the previous log was kind of some full throttle, um, you know, stuff, but I wanted to kind of show you guys what this would look like, you know, just accelerating through traffic and, and the, how you spend the majority of your, your time. So I've kind of sifted through here to just the stuff that we need. Um, so if we look here, I've got my current gear right here. Here's my timing advance, which I'm going to be looking at. Um, we've got some other, other PIDs over here. We can see right here, uh, just again, we've got our throttle kind of here in green. It's just real light. I am logging um, engine torque just to kind of use as a reference, because if you'll notice, um, like in our shift pressure tables, this isn't pound feet, you know, so it is referencing some sort of uh, torque torque value. So we can use that as we're, as we're you know, trying to plot, plot things. But you can see here, um, you know, this is a one, two shift right here. Um, it looks kind of jagged. If we kind of go to where it completes the shift, we can see here, one and a half seconds um, looking right here. Um, so we just want to be careful. Um, you know, again, this is, th that's going to be a lot of time. Um, you know, you definitely don't want the transmission just sliding in and out of gears, you know? And so if we come over here to our shift timing, um, let's see if we come in here and we look at our torque in pound feet, 175 we're going to be somewhere in this range so you can see that this one two shift it's going to allow up to you know almost a, a half of a second potentially you know um that the shift can happen um, and then you see here we're just kind of again the rp you know the speed i'm just kind of you know gradually gradually go going um we can see this here and you can see what the spark dips down to looks like it's down to about 10 degrees um, at its lowest point, yeah, and then it kind of picks back up, you know, as it as it does what it's going to do, um, and you can definitely feel this hump, this bubble right here, you know, so it's not pulling out very much spark, but the pressure to help complete it probably is, is a bit of an issue. Here we have a two to three shift, um, and you can see right here are two to three shift. And then if we come over here, you know, almost one full second and we're at 187 foot pounds, two, three at 187. I mean, it's just, it's very, very slow, very lethargic. Um, if we come down here, it's pulling 11 degrees, you know, it's yanking enough out to 11 degrees. If we come over here to torque management, um, if we go to our normal table, we're not in the performance table again. So part of this is that, and again, I do have a stock uh, 2004 GMC Yukon file in the background that I got from the HP Tuners repository. So the thing is, is that you can see down here, you know, there's very little, I mean, there's really, there's not any torque management. So it's going to shift, you know, under pretty substantial power. So really you need to go back and, and previous part of the video and look at when, it, you know, when you really stand in the throttle and it gets up into this range up here, this is going to play a role and you're going to see those timing advance values dip into the negatives, you know, but there again, this one took basically a full second. Um, if we go and we do some more driving around here, it's a little more, uh, you know, of a brisk pull. Yeah. And you can see here, okay. 230 foot pounds. If we come over here, you know, yeah. So the the torque management is going to be yanking the yanking more spark out. Um, if we come over here, this is a one to two shift. Yeah, and again, 0.3 seconds. You know, so it's referencing higher shift. Uh, you know, pressures as well. Come over here to shift pressures, and we come to upshift. Yeah, 230. It's going to be referencing these values as opposed to down here. So it's got more pressure to help complete the shift. So again, you kind of have like a a left hand and a right hand, you know, kind of thing uh, going on. But nonetheless, you know, it's still point, you know, point three, uh, you know, seconds. I mean, so here we have a two to three shift. Um, you can see here this one took over a second. So while I'm sure that it didn't spill any coffee, you know, we definitely could, could speed this up. This one's really not that bad. You know, while you can feel the spark pocket, um, it, it is a clean, crisp shift 
even for um, yanking as much timing um, out of it as it does. You can see here, one day, you know, that's not terrible, you know. So if we come over here, however, this two three shift, you will feel this hump. Yeah, I mean, you'll you'll feel it kind of fall on its face, and then it kind of stumbles, and then look, I mean, it took a second over a second for this to happen. So um, this is again, you know, what it kind of looks like driving around town. And this is gonna kind of conclude this part one video. Again, this can be, you can do this test with a Gen 3, a Gen 4, a Gen 5. It's just a matter of manipulating the uh, the tables, you know, um, in a manner that, you know, um, is appropriate. So that's, this is gonna kind of gonna be the first look at the stock trans settings um, after this uh, in the next part we're going to go in and start making some modifications uh, so hope you guys uh, enjoyed this first video on transmission tuning and uh, yeah we will see you in part two later